It's week two of the NFL, and Will get a look at J.J. McCarthy. He's been sensational as he leads the league in touchdown passes. It's the Vikings and the 49ers, next on Madden Football. Now from downtown Minneapolis, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us inside beautiful U.S. Bank Stadium, the home of the Vikings. Thanks for having us in, Mike Tirico, Greg Olson. It's week two of this NFL season. A couple of teams feeling good, Greg. Victory in the season opener, and that gives you just great momentum off the schneid to start the season. Now, what's ahead for these guys? Going into week one was always kind of an interesting deal, Mike, and I always felt as a player, you prepare months for week one, and then you prepare seven days for week two. It's kind of a very interesting thing, and here you have both teams, 1-0, gotten off to a great start. Now you only got a week to turn the page, and you want to get into a normal rhythm week to week of what is a long NFL season. The better you start, the better it makes the end of the year, and you find yourself in that playoff hunt. You want to get these early September games. The Vikings led out by the rookie, J.J. McCarthy. Won the national championship at the University of Michigan. Wasn't asked to throw it a ton during that championship run, but very athletic, very impressive. And Greg, he's the guy for the Vikes. You know you have a good week, Mike, when it takes all five fingers on one hand just to show how many touchdowns you threw in last week's win. Now, do we expect him to do that two weeks in a row? I'm not sure that's realistic, but as long as he continues to operate at this high of a level, they're going to have a strong chance to win every single week. This defense wanted to come out early in this game and take the fight to the offense, and boy, did they ever set the tone on the very first play, keeping that carry to no gain. Throwing on second down is McCarthy. And it'll be taken down after a gain of nine. And third down, I'm up. These are the type of plays that drive a coach crazy in the film room, and you have to learn as a quarterback to avoid. You can take some chances. You can push the ball downfield, but not only to pick up a couple yards. You got to pick your chances of when you want to be aggressive, and you got to make sure you make better decisions going forward. about this call here, Mike, right? And this third and short, just get the ball to your running back, make sure he has enough space to pick up the first down, and they're able to convert. They'll come up first and 10 at the 40. From the shotgun, it's a throw for McCarthy. That one caught by the former Lion, TJ Hawkinson. And they'll have it across midfield, down at the opposing 46-yard line. They've done a nice job spreading the ball around. Make the defense have to account for as many different weapons as possible here early. I think back to our conversation with this coaching staff, Mike. They identified this guy as someone they needed to get involved early and often, so... That might be his first target. I don't think it's going to be his last. They'll put Addison in motion. On the handoff, Jones. And not much there. He's back to the original line. No gain on that one. These edge rushers, they are judged by their sack totals, Mike. They love to rush the passer. But they have responsibilities in the run game as well. Great job here keeping it to no gain. Motion man sent right. Little play action here with McCarthy. And this will be incomplete. He was looking for Jordan Addison that time. And it's going to be third down. With that, we'll give you a look at the draft class from this past April. And obviously, any time you select a quarterback with your first pick, he's going to steal most of the headlines. But this organization feels like they were able to add some other foundational pieces in the selections that follow. To the air on third down is McCarthy. He'll let this go deep for Jefferson. 
They told us this week they were going to try to come out fast, and tell you what, that's exactly what they did. Put immediate pressure on this secondary and let them know, hey, all game long today, you better defend every blade of grass because we're coming out firing. And even though that ball falls incomplete, it goes a long way in setting up the rest of this game plan as the game unfolds. Here come the 49ers, and they are led by Brock Purdy. You know the story, taken last in the 2022 draft, the last two seasons, he has led the Niners deep in the playoffs, and it's his third season, Greg, as the QB for San Francisco. A lot of things jump off the tape when you watch last week, Mike, but it was really just the overall execution of the game plan that stuck out the most. I mean, not only did he get them in the end zone a handful of times, he protected the ball, and he routinely exploited the weaknesses that they found during the week on film. He's going to be looking to do the same thing over these next four quarters. If he's successful, they're going to have a shot to leave here with another win. They got there in a hurry, didn't they, Mike? I mean, luckily for him, he saw that free rusher coming and at the very least was able to get that ball out to prevent the sack. Purdy now on second down. Under pressure, and he'll go down. They got him. Work to do following the sack. It is third and long. Purdy to throw. Screen pass to IU. Caught. And he'll be stopped short of the first down. And that will necessitate a call to the punt team. It's fourth down. When a defense has speed to the ball like this group does, it makes these wide receiver screens really challenging. Because all those fast linebackers and defensive backs that are chasing the ball carrier, the offensive line are the ones responsible for them. And sometimes that's just a speed mismatch and they can't get out in front. The Vikings offense ready to get going with their second possession. They'll search for the first points of this game as they begin the drive on first and ten. The drive begins with a carry by Jones. And he's fighting to try to get back to the line of scrimmage, but will not do it. This is going to be a loss of a yard. Well, they try to get the run game started here early on this drive, Mike, and they're just going to have to do a better job up front. There's really nowhere for this ball carrier to go. You never want to lose yards on first down, but that's exactly the case here. Lost one on the last play, so now it's second and 11. From the gun, here's McCarthy. Taking this one downfield for Hopkinson. And the Niners are going to take possession. They've got it at their own 42. I think he chalked this one up, Mike, to just a rookie mistake. And anytime you have a young signal caller behind center, you're going to have to deal with some of these ups and downs. Every once in a while, they're just not going to see the coverage. They're going to get baited into making a bad throw. That's kind of par for the course. The key is... How fast can these rookie quarterbacks turn the page, move on, and not make the same mistake again? The NFL's leading rusher a season ago, Christian McCaffrey. And he tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, but will not happen here. I think he's going to lose a yard. Injury on the field, and it is George Kittle who is in some discomfort. The training staff going to look and we'll step out for a moment. On second down, Purdy. Right side, hauled in by Samuel. Following the completion, we'll get a stoppage here for an injured player. So as they look at the injured player, we'll take a timeout. Here's third down and a few inches. They'll try to run for it with McCaffrey. Now after the run, we get a stoppage for an injured player. Athletic training staff looking at him, so we'll step aside. A fresh set of downs to work with. It is first down and 10. 
They run once more with McCaffrey. And they're going to get him down this time. Not as easy as the last carry. This time they drop him behind the line of scrimmage. Second down. Great job by that linebacker timing his blitz. He didn't give any indication to the offense that he was coming. And he's able to get through that hole and take the ball carrier down for a loss. Last play went the wrong way. It sets up second and long. It's second down and 12. Throw left side complete to Pearsall. Now we get whistles. Time has run out. The first quarter has come to an end. Here's third and seven. Throwing from the gun is Purdy. Right back to Pearsall again. And a good job here defensively. They did not let him get away. He's well short of the first down mark. This is one of those throws where you're hoping you do most of the damage after the catch, but give credit to the defense. Once that ball was caught, they were on him quickly, and there was nowhere for him to go after the catch. Moody's kick is good, and the Niners will take a 3-0 lead. And I think this is going to end up being considered a successful drive, Mike. I think, obviously, you would have loved to see them come down and convert and score a touchdown. But at the very least, they needed to come away with three. They were able to do that and take a lead on that field goal. To return, it's Brandon Powell. He'll be out of bounds beyond the 20-yard line. The Vikings offense ready to get back to work. The next drive about to start. We'll remind you what's coming up here in week two. A couple of good ones to look forward to. Two good young quarterbacks going at it later tonight in Houston. The Bears and Texans at NRG Stadium. And then tomorrow, Monday Night Football, as the New Look Falcons head to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. Kickoff there, 8-15 Eastern time. They face second down and seven. Working out of the shotgun, it is McCarthy. That's caught by Jefferson on the right side. They don't need much. It is third and inches. They'll let the fullback try to push the pot. And this will wind up a Vikings first down as the tackle's made just shy of the 40. You know, Mike, in some ways, I liken fullbacks to kind of the modern-day tight end. They're the ones that are willing to do a little of the dirty work on most plays. So every once in a while, it is so good to see them rewarded and have a chance to be the guy who delivers and converts on third down. On play action, here's McCarthy. That's into the hands of Aaron Jones. And he's close to a first down to gain a nine. Nice pitch and catch on first down. Great example of first down efficiency. You don't always have to go for the big play, but put yourself in a friendly second down. Now you have equal opportunity to both run and pass. On the give, it's Jones. Still keeping the flanks moving, somehow managing to turn that into a game. The try and run for the first down with Jones. Everybody 
in the stadium saw that run coming, Mike, but good luck stopping it. I mean, all he really had to do was just fall forward, and it would be enough to pick up the first down. Two minutes remain in a 3 nothing first half. We'll have more from Minneapolis after this. They'll break the huddle. Coming up now for first and ten. Now McCarthy. The pass rush gets home and he goes down. That is Leonard Floyd, the veteran who got to the quarterback. Defense came out in a soft zone, and I think it caught the quarterback a little off guard. He was trying to attack them downfield. By the time he was able to get through his progression to his check down, he ran out of time, and that's all the pass rush needed to get into the backfield and put it down. Well, that helps. It's going to be a much more manageable third down, getting some good yardage on that second down play. After that first down sack, I think we both kind of looked at each other and said, all right, well, there goes this drive. But a really nice job there in the passing game on second down. That big chunk brings them from second and long to now at least third and manageable. He'll try to run for it. There was a lot of questions surrounding this quarterback about whether his style of play from college would transfer to the NFL game. Well, his ability to create with his legs certainly has here today. We see it with his ability to escape pressure out of the pocket, and he's able to pick up the first down. On first down, here's McCarthy. That's to the end zone, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver was Justin Jefferson, and it'll lead to a second down. That's one he'd love to have back. An opportunity to score six was right there for the taking. Just wasn't quite meant to be. McCarthy to the air on second down. To the middle of the field, taken in by Addison. And they'll get about eight out of that one, but still a little work to do now on third down. Third and two, and here's McCarthy. And that is caught in the end zone. He's in. Justin Jefferson. Touchdown, Vikings. It's his second touchdown of the year. Ah, oh, the teamwork was just ideal there. Greg, we don't see practice all week, but we see it pay off in the game. And when you have a wide receiver, Mike, that can operate near the sideline, it just increases the amount of space that quarterback has to work with. He knows that he can put that ball maybe a little bit further away from the defender, knowing he's got the guy on the other end to not only secure the catch, but to keep his feet in bounds for a touchdown. They didn't leave much time on the clock to put together a drive here at the end of the first half. And the kickoff's coming their way. He fields it at the 8. And he'll work this one past the 25 to right about the 28-yard line. The Niners offense going to get it one final time in this first half. Trail by four. Touchdown gives him the lead. Drive begins with first and 10. A tight end in motion now. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll take this forward for about three. It's second down. So we've reached the intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we'll get you down to Orlando now, that's with the coaches, Jonathan Coachman, and our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Michael, we'll get back to you and Greg in just a little bit. For now, plenty of early action in the 1 o'clock Eastern window to get you caught up on. So let's get to it. We start up at Ford Field. Detroit playing host to Tampa Bay. And it's the Buccaneers who are out in front with that game closing in on halftime. Sterling Shepard, a touchdown reception. From there, we head down to Tennessee to check on the Titans at home in Nashville. And it's the visiting Jets who have the lead in that one. Aaron Rodgers, 
has thrown a touchdown pass. Finally, let's get up to the place they call Title Town, Green Bay, Wisconsin, to see what's happening with the Packers. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. Romeo Dobbs, a touchdown reception. In that first half, we were treated to a stellar performance by the rookie from Michigan, J.J. McCarthy. He has a touchdown pass, and that amounted to the only touchdown of the game for either team thus far. These two teams making their way back out of their locker room, so that means we're just about set for the second half. And to bring it your way, we go back out to Mike and Greg. Both these teams running through their final adjustments. It's time for the second half. And for the call, let's get it back out to Mike Tirico and Greg Olson. Coach, thank you. Both teams trying to find the right formula to come out on top in this second half. Coming up. A safe kick taken at the five. Across the 20, they'll mark him down before the 25-yard line. And that's where the offense will take over. Now the return man is a bit slow getting up after that kick. And as the medical staff looks him over, we'll step aside. So here's a first and 10 now. They'll start from the 24. From the gun, it's Purdy. That's caught. Christian McCaffrey. A very nice open field tackle there. He could not get free. Gains nothing. We'll try again. It's second and ten. Out of the gun. Here's Purdy. That's taken in by Jennings. Nice gain here. He's going to be marked down at the 35-yard line. Here's first and ten. Shotgun snap to Purdy. A very quick throw there, but not on the same page with his target. That's incomplete. Trying to get it to Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield. It's second down. Throwing again is Purdy. Open man is Samuel, complete. And they will finally run him down. Those are the explosive pass plays that this team is going to continue to mine all day. And you can see pre-snap, the quarterback loved his matchup. He allowed his receiver to work downfield. Perfect throw, and now sets them up to try to see if they can finish this drive off with some points. pressure and down he goes they go work to do now as they come up on second and long they run straight ahead with McCaffrey he looks forward for maybe a yard Linebacker Ivan Pace up to make that play. What can they do here? This is third and forever. To throw is Purdy. They'll try to set up the screen to McCaffrey. So a good chunk of yardage there, but still well short of the first down. When you throw the ball short of the sticks on third down, you're relying heavily on the yards after the catch. So give credit to the defense here. Once the ball carrier had the ball, multiple guys around him, corralled him, take him down short of the sticks. He is two for two. That kick is good. And the 49ers are back within one. It's seven to six. And I can tell you firsthand, Mike, when you find yourself trailing in a game, you don't feel very good about coming away with field goals. But in this case, it does get them a little bit closer and cut into this deficit. How now to bring it back. Oh, he's got room past the 30. Nice job on the return. He's down close to the 35-yard line. Justin Jefferson and this Vikings offense heading out for their next possession. Their lead is just a point as they begin it on this drive with first and ten.
from the shotgun. It's a throw from McCarthy. He's taken down, but just shy of midfield. Every once in a while, it just comes down to you need somebody in the huddle to just make a play. And it wasn't a whole lot fancy here. The quarterback just dumps the ball down, a quick underneath completion. And then really, it's the yards after catch that did the rest. And that's what it takes. You're not always going to have the perfect play. You're not always going to dial up the perfect play against the perfect look. Sometimes players need to make plays, and that was a good one there. They'll come up now for second down and four. Throwing now, it's McCarthy. Open man is Brandon Powell. And that's a first down. It will be a gain of eight. Bold decision there by this quarterback to attack a guy who's already made you pay for challenging him earlier today. He trusted his guy to not only win, but to defeat man coverage, and I think he got away with one there. Play action now. It's McCarthy. He'll take a shot here for the end zone. I can sit up here all day, Mike, and we can talk about the missed throw. But I think a lot of the credit has to go to the pass defense. Not only did they do a good job making it difficult for them to complete the pass, but I think they saved the touchdown along the way. They'll try again here. Second and ten. Looking to throw. McCarthy. A short one taken by Hawkinson. And they bring him down inside the 25-yard line. Now, this is the epitome of a really short throw and a really nice run after catch. And listen, for a quarterback, it all counts the same. You don't always have to throw the ball downfield to generate explosive plays. And these drag routes can be very, very effective. Set to go now on first and 10. On the ground now with Jones. And he's going to lose yardage here. That's the way they'll switch ends as this third quarter has come to an end. Second and 11. To throw is McCarthy. That ball incomplete. Got the hands in there to break it up. Could have been a big gainer. Instead, it sets up a third down. So, of course, you prefer to connect on that throw. But think about it like this, Mike. The more they continue to test this defense downfield, the more it's going to open up some of those shorter passes underneath. To the air on third down is McCarthy. This one is caught by Addison. And a good short tackle right there. It stops him a good distance short of the marker. It sets up fourth down. The receiver thought he had a nice soft spot in that zone coverage, and he settles down to give a nice target to the quarterback. But the defense had eyes on him the entire time. Secure rally tackle prevents that from turning into a big play. So big spot coming for the kicker, Will Riker. This to stretch the lead to more than a field goal. His kick is good. He got it. So it is still a one-score game, but a little more breathing room now. And this is what you want. I mean, you clearly have the advantage, but you want to continue to apply pressure. Can you score every time you get the ball? They're able to do that here. They tack on three and extend their lead. And a solid run back there. He'll get this out past the 30-yard line. Here's the San Francisco offense, ready to take possession of the ball once more. They'll start out first down and 10.
They'll run here. Not much. Second and long coming up. They'll stick to the ground. And that one shut down pretty quickly. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing more. Well, this has been the story of the entire game, Mike. It's just how well this defense has played, particularly against the run. There has been nowhere to operate for this offense, and it continued here on this last play. So Kittle comes in motion. On third down, it's Purdy. They'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. Here's the quarterback doing everything in his power to extend this play, and none of his guys could get open. You got to see someone separate, work with your quarterback, go into scramble second reaction mode, and it's also give some credit to the back end, doing a nice job plastering with their assignment, and he had no choice but to throw it away. And he's going to be hit and dropped right away. That's great coverage there. Winds up with nothing on the return. The Vikings offense about ready to take over once more. The lead sits at four. So they'll try to add on to that. This drive begins with first and ten. From the gun, here's McCarthy. Looking for Jefferson deep downfield. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. Here's McCarthy. He'll get this over the middle to Jefferson. And he'll be brought down, but not before they get this all the way up near midfield. A lot could go wrong anytime you decide to put the ball in the air here late in the fourth quarter as you're trying to run out the clock and protect this lead. But at the same time, I like that they haven't gone super concerned. Just hand off right, hand off left, and it just turns into tackling practice. So I like the balance of making the defense defend everything, because right now, possess the ball, protect the ball, and ultimately, just run the clock out. Second down and eight. Again, it's Jones. And he will not be able to get free, picking up only a yard. Now, it's third down. Now, after the run, we get a stoppage for an injured player. As the athletic training staff looks at him, we'll step away for a moment. What can they do here on third down and seven? To throw, it's McCarthy. Here comes the screen to Jones. I think this is one of those plays that when the ball carrier watches this back in the film room tomorrow, he's going to be a little frustrated with himself. If he could just have made that one guy miss, he picks up the first down. Instead, he gets brought down short of the sticks, and now they got a fourth down decision to make. It'll be a punt coming up for the Vikings. As they try to play the field position game here, protecting a fourth quarter lead. Oh, not the greatest punt there. This is going to hit and go out of bounds. The Niners offense back onto the field for their next possession. They'll have a long field ahead of them as they start first and ten. From the shotgun, it's Purdy. Downfield, and it's caught by Ayuk. And they're going to move this one all the way up near the 30-yard line. And this is a tricky part of the game for any defense. You find yourself protecting a late lead, and the age-old question is, do you remain aggressive? Do you try to just keep the ball from being thrown over your head and make everything be tackled and played in front of you? That's what every defensive coordinator struggles with, so they can't get too soft here as they try to hold on to this lead here late. 
That's caught by McCaffrey. All right, so there's really three areas that a modern NFL running back has to excel in. Number one, the traditional handoffs. Yes, you have to operate out of the backfield like a traditional running back. Number two, you have to be excellent and reliable in pass protection. And maybe bigger than all of them, you have to be at least serviceable out of the backfield in the passing game. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield. Plenty of time, plus two timeouts at their disposal. It's first and ten. They'll drop to throw. Quick throw here is complete. And he's brought down after a game of six on first down. He gets it to Samuel, left side. And they'll take this down inside the 35. This is first and ten. Now McCaffrey. And he'll plow forward for a gain of four yards. He'll come up now for second down. Samuel, there to make the catch. And it'll be a short pickup that's not enough for the first down. Following the completion, we'll get a stoppage here for an injured player. Noise reverberating off the roof. Very loud before third down. Needing a yard, they throw with Purdy. And this is a touchdown! They were not going to be denied, and they have taken the lead here in the final minute of play. What a terrific play at the back of the end zone. Greg, that is so hard to do, but something you did during your career. How do the guys pull that off? Yeah, the key here, Mike, is the concentration to not only see the ball, but then you have to feel the ground. You have to know exactly where you are in the back line of the end zone. And tell you what, this is about as good as it gets. Come down with the ball, two feet in bounds, touchdown. An important extra point up and good, so the lead is three here in the late stages of the game. So the kickoff team out there one final time in the final minute as they kick it away. This is going to be taken in at the three. He's across the 20, taken down just shy of the 25. Out comes the Minnesota offensive unit as they get set to take over. This one has been tight so far. A field goal separating the two sides as this drive kicks off with first and ten. Working out of the shotgun, it is McCarthy. So now a timeout for the Vikings. That is their first. Stopping here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. They'll come to the line now on second and two. Now McCarthy. That's caught by Jones out of the backfield. Four-yard line. Two timeouts, still in their back pocket. It's first and ten. And that one knocked away. It's incomplete. This is one of those situations that plays directly into the hands of the defense because think, like, they know this offense has to be one-dimensional. This has to be a pass. So what do they do? They bring in extra defensive backs. They clog up the back end. And at the end of the day, there's just nowhere for the offense to go with the ball. McCarthy to the air on second down. That's caught by Jefferson on the right side. And he'll be out of bounds, but not before he gets inside the 35-yard line. Catch number seven so far in this one. And a first down. They'll run with Jones. And that'll be a pickup of three. Jones, 
Now, timeout called. Let's see, you're looking at a long field goal drive from here. Well, this might be one final heave to the end zone. So big spot coming for the kicker, Will Riker. This to force overtime. This one is good. Would you expect anything less from this game? We are going to get some more. Headed to overtime. So, overtime coming up. Not a playoff game, so a quick reminder of the rules. Each team gets one possession unless the opening possession is a touchdown. Then it's game over. Any defensive score ends the game. Each team gets a couple of timeouts, and all replays come from upstairs. If the first OT ends in a tie, so does the game. Four quarters could not determine a winner. We get back underway here in overtime. Howell now to bring it back. Now an opening past the 30. They're going to be set up with a short field. What a tremendous kick return. What a time for that. I mean, you've just finished four quarters. You've got guys with tired legs. They're dragging. They're worn out. And then you get this return. It sparks your entire sideline. And you have a chance to win this game right away here on this opening drive of overtime. The home team's offense ready to see what they can do. They'll start in outstanding field position, looking for a way to break our top. Ball rests at the 37. It's first and 10. Setting up to throw is McCarthy. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. Back to throw. To the right side. He's got Hawkinson, his tight end. The drag route is such a good way to get the ball early into the hands of your tight end and take some pressure off the quarterback and give him an easy completion. The size and the athleticism allows them to try to pick up more yards but do it after the catch. Third and five. From the shotgun, it's a throw for McCarthy. And great determination as he gets forward and picks up the first down. I can't tell you, Mike, how many of these offensive skill players around the league, they look at man coverage as like a personal offense. They, they, they can't imagine that a defensive coordinator would say, hey, we're just going to have one guy defend you all by himself. And after that last completion on the way back to the hole, I think he had a few choice words for him. And he said, hey, man, you can't guard me one-on-one. -on -one. You better ask your coach for some help. Because if he doesn't, you're going to be in for a long day. This just shows why you can't count on just one guy to take him down. He's a powerful enough runner. you got to have guys coming in support when that first hit is made. It takes a team effort to stop him, especially once he gets going. On second down, here's McCarthy. Uh, nowhere to get away, and he's going to go down. Outside of a turnover, this was probably the worst-case scenario. Immediate pressure in his face with nowhere to go with the ball downfield. Just get the ball out of your hand. Live to play another down. Instead, he retreats backwards and leads to a massive loss. Hey! Work to do following the sack. It is third and long. McCarthy from the gun here on third. This one intercepted. That's the linebacker, Fred Warner. 
And the Niners are going to get this back at their own 34-yard line. So as this game's gone on, Mike, this secondary is just continuing to learn, continuing to remember all the different looks this offense has thrown at them. And now it all pays off. Start of overtime, they see one that they recognize, and they jump it, and now they set up their team with a chance to win it here in overtime. Now a first throw here in overtime. And a good effort there defensively. It's knocked away and incomplete. Ricky Pearsall, the intended receiver. And it'll be second down. Out of the gun. It's Purdy. And he's not going to get away. They track him down. Sometimes you just have to know when the play is over and live to play another down. He has pressure coming right at him. And instead of just throwing the ball away, he tries to escape, he tries to get creative, and he ends up losing a lot more yards than he should have. Two minutes to go here in overtime. Greg and I back to search for a winner after this. So, backed up after the sack, and now it's third and long. Shotgun snap to Purdy. Going for it all. And he's got it! And he's going to be taken down inside the 40-yard line. This is really nice timing and execution by both the quarterback and his receiver. The quarterback puts that ball high and to the outside. That's the only spot now his guy can catch it, protects it from the defender, and it leads to a nice conversion. Now a first and 10 from the 38-yard line. Purdy works out of the pistol. A toss, left side, caught by his running back. Nice job here by the defense. Did a good job just covering up everything for the most part. So once this ball was caught, really didn't have much of a choice but to just head out of bounds and pick up a modest game. On second down, Purdy. His fullback releasing, and he's going to bring it in. 13 yards on that pass play. It's good for a Niners first down. Back to the air is Purdy. That's Ayuk with it on the left side. And he's close to another first down. He's brought down just shy of the marker. So they have these rules for the receivers, Mike. They call them green grass rules. And the idea is if you're running across the field and you're looking at the quarterback, you're going to stay on the run. If you're not looking at the quarterback... And he's into the end zone. That'll do it. They win it. In OT. When you start talking about the qualities of a top tier back in the NFL, Mike, we all talk about size, speed, the ability to keep your feet, the ability to have balance at contact. But the part we don't talk enough about is patience, understanding the blocking scheme, the timing, when to hit the hole, as much as what hole to hit. And I think you get a great example of what that looks like when it all comes together. He takes advantage of the scheme, and next thing you know, he hits his head on the goalpost. So, a win here for our visitors, the 49ers. They had to work for this one. All even through four quarters, able to get the breakthrough in overtime to come away with a victory. So, that'll do it for us. For Greg Olson and our terrific team behind the scenes, I'm Mike Tirico. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. Follow us on X at EA Madden NFL. With that... We say so long, everyone.